Alright, so we're accepting the fish delivery mission with Heartman. It says you need 30 minutes to get back to Heartman with rare fish on your back. Uh, let's hope that uh, we can make it. I think we should be able to. Put those used blood bags in the private locker. Okay. Let's hope there aren't going to be too many BTs along the way. It's a pretty not not a too far of a trip, honestly. So Order let's make sure this is auto adjusted. There we go. It's pretty hilarious. The game doesn't just doesn't auto do it. Why not? Why doesn't the game just assume you want everything to be auto balanced and auto balance it for you? That's kind of silly in my opinion. But okay, let's save. Oh, shout out to honest fan who had cheered and said quivering jowls. There you go, quivering jowls. Sounds fun. <laughs> sounds quivering jowl sounds fun <clears throat> what is this what destination heartman's lab destination heartman's lab i guess we're going to heartman's lab okay Okay, we gotta go further up the mountain. I guess we go around. <clears throat> yeah, like down here. Anyone leave a vehicle around? Sometimes people leave vehicle around these places, but I don't see one. The whiteout is gone, by the way. Last time we were here, there was a whiteout, but that is completely gone now. So yeah, we're going the right direction. This way, over this freaking mountain range. We gotta climb all the effing way up the mountain. You know what, let's go a little bit further this direction. QW Dubs cheered. He said, how does one become a moderator? Well, very arduous process. First, you have to go through a, a very thorough background screening process, okay? It takes a few weeks just to get that one to go through. Then there's an application process by which you have to fill out at least 27 pages of forms. You know, including your, your previous employment history, that kind of stuff. You know, if you have any kind of criminal record. Um, then you have to at least contribute... $40,000 to my streams. And then once all that's been obtained, then I will at least put you into the running for consideration. Okay, that's how it works. Obviously, that's not the case at all. That's what the, that's what the assholes who hate me would say, of course, because they're fucking out of their mind. Idiots. But, uh... No! Bottom line is, if you're interested, email me darksandfillahotmail.com But, the truth of the matter is, I don't think we need... We don't need too many more mods. I just think we need people who can show up a little bit more consistently. For Flintstone cheers, I know it's a meme, but have you tried Wendy's Chili? I only have, I've had it in the past. When I was younger, I used to go to Wendy's all the time. I think I told this story before. So I used to go to this arcade in Connecticut, and it was open to like 2 a.m. And what we would do is, in the way home, when we were driving home from the arcade, we would go to a 24-hour Wendy's, and we would basically buy the cheapest stuff on the menu. They used to have baked potatoes. I don't know if they still have them. So you like, the dollar baked potato with sour cream and chai, you know, a bowl of, the, like, the dollar Wendy's chili, the dollar burger that they had. So for, like, five, six dollars, you'd get, like, a giant mule, so much different kind of food. And so I used to eat the chili back then. I never liked it, but it was just something for variety. My friends, a few of my friends loved it. I never really liked it, though. So I never really bothered with it. Um, now, years later, when I was doing DSP tries, it one of the earliest DSP tries. It's I had the Wendy's salad. It, I think it was like the Baja Southwest salad, and it came with a bowl of chili. Now I was like, I don't understand why a salad would come with chili. So I ate the salad, and then I said, okay. And there's a bowl of chili. I, I tasted it. I didn't like it. So come to find out after my review was done, people actually told me you're supposed to pour the fucking chili on top of the salad. Like what the fuck? Who would want a wet? soaked yo know, salad with chili in it that's it makes no sense at all that's really gross but apparently that's what you were supposed to do so have i had it yes i never liked it i never liked the, the wendy's chili at all i always thought it was pretty nasty well we got some nice content id matching music here for everybody have i ever had a taco salad no i know it exists isn't the taco salad where they put it in like a bowl of like tort made from a tortilla and it has like all the ingredients of like taco inside and you would eat it off of the tortilla you break off and stuff i think that's what it is great lost cargo baby milk a baby's milk 
Looks like we're gonna have to fight more fucking BTs. You can't believe it. Yep, more BTs. So it was always so much fun you know, going past these fucking BTs in the past. Why not throw some more in now? Right? Why not? Why not? Oxygen mask has been damaged. Good, we don't even need it. <laughs> the heavy fucking snow. So, you know, I have to say it, but a lot of the reviews that I read about this game were pretty dead on. They were like, you know, you're going to play like 10, 15 hours and get all these things to make the game easier. And then the game might become enjoyable for you. And that's when the game decides, oh, let's take all those things away and put you in the mountains. And now all the game becomes all as tedious as hell again. And I mean, that's pretty dead on correct. You know, they're, they're right. I have to say, that some of the reviews I read were pretty dead on right. <laughs> Remember the cuff blades? Yeah, I know I have cuff blades, but the game never explained how to use them at all. So I never bothered with it, and I'm probably never going to. I don't see the point when I could just uh, walk past everything or shoot it with a gun. You know? Never once was there an element in the game where it explained the cuff blade. Just like it never explained the zip line, never explained anything. So if you're not going to explain it, I'm not going to fucking bother with it. I'm just going to get through the game the way I can. You know, it is what it is, I guess. What the hell was that? That didn't even make sense. Weird physics glitch. Well, the good news is we're going to make it. Only five minutes have elapsed. <laughs> 2019! And game developers can't figure out that they actually want you... We want the game elements to be explained to us. Not that we have to fucking just fuck with it ourselves till we figure it out. No. Modern games just tell us what the fuck how to do stuff, man. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. All right, we made it. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. Cargo verified. Thank you. Okay, easy peasy. Got a lost cargo. Ancient bacteria samples that I picked up. Now the fish. Deliver those fish. Uh. Deliver. What are we gonna do with live fish? Probably make some dinner. Delivery uh -huh. complete. Displaying performance evaluation. Rank of S, Hartman's Lab provided the following new hologram data, BT. And that one, ooh, Hartman provided data for Luden's Mask, Lightning Blue. So now I have different mask colors. And I had green, I have other ones I could put on from leveling up these different uh, outposts. Very Thank nice. You for your continued support. Good work. All right. New order available. Now to the next leg of the story. Terminal for further information. Here we go. Huh. Thank you, Sam. In reclaiming our past, we've uncovered a number of vital clues. Don't worry. I just got back. We have time. That's it. When you met with Mama, you experienced a strong antigen antibody reaction, correct? There was a BT in the room. There was, but something else may have been causing it. I've discovered large quantities of chiral matter in Mama as well. 
not just the usual kind that collects on our skin or on our suits. It's in all her cells, cells that are no longer active. The BT you encountered there was special. It was her child, but also her own soul. Somehow, her car and half failed to separate. They must have remained connected through the umbilical cord. It's the only explanation. Is that why I didn't get a bruise where she touched me? Yes, and there's more. Ten seconds to cardiac arrest. No. Uh. I modified the log times. Headquarters will have no record of what we say. Oh. Look, a message from Dead Man. It came with the umbilical cord. Sam, uh, I'm sorry. You deserve to know what you were carrying. But I couldn't risk Die Hardman finding out about the case. So they're still going behind so their no backs. But to keep it off the books. Yeah. You've got to keep this between us. We still don't know if the director can be trusted. The umbilical cord was taken from Bridget Strand. I removed it in secret. Oh? The cord wasn't attached to a fetus. It was outside her body. What? She asked me to take care of it. Said it was the key to unlocking the death stranding. But she insisted that I never tell the director. The court shows no sign of decomposition or necrotization. Almost as if it's frozen in time. I thought Hartman might be able to make sense of it. So I had it hidden with your cargo at Mountain Knot City. Hmm. More likes! Dead Man's observations were accurate. It's just like Mama's corpse. What do you mean? I mean, they share a very unique property. Both contain large amounts of Corellium in their cells. In other words, the President's cord was somehow connected to the beach, and that allowed it to escape the flow of time. I've put together the bones of a theory. It's patchy, but worth sharing, I think. Life on Earth has been rocked by many extinctions, great and small, including the big five. And if you examine the Earth's strata, its history, if you will, you'll find Corellium deposits that can be dated to each. What if the manifestation of, our, of beaches and other associated phenomena correspond to extinction level events? You mean? Yeah. Yes. Our Death Stranding could just be the latest of many. The records and research you helped us to recover strongly suggest that we are in the middle of the sixth extinction. Hmm. Sixth extinction. Come on. You know what this is, yes? A frozen mammoth from 10,000 years ago. More and likes! This? <laughs> the Iceman from our five. 5,300 years ago. They both have the same umbilical cords. Ugh. Bullshit. Humor me. What if the mammoth and the Iceman weren't frozen? You're saying time stopped for them just like it did for Mama? Hmm. Unfortunately, all these specimens were lost in the Death Stranding, so there's no way to examine the genuine articles. But some fragments of data did survive. With the aid of the chiral network, we may be able to piece together something more concrete using Evodevo tech. All right, how's this? A dinosaur from 65 and a half million years ago. Umbilical cord, not decomposed. Uh -uh. Only mammals have umbilical cords. Mm -mm. No, only mammals have umbilical cords ah! used for childbirth. Dislike. This is something else. Call it a strand from the um, other side. I propose that mammalian umbilici are a sort of mimesis of the strand that then evolved over time. 
we shouldn't assume that everything about a Death Stranding is detrimental to life. Trilobites, Ammonites, dinosaurs, the mammoth, the iceman, all preserved as if frozen in time, all without exception, bound with strands. Which She's is saying that the fossils weren't connected. really fossils. Huh. Then, and this, yeah, this is when weird. In the context of the extinction entity, EE theory, leads me to surmise that organisms with strands are in fact extinction entities. You see, Sam, EEs are connected to the beach via their strands, and it is through this connection that they somehow bring about a death stranding. So you're saying Bridget was an extinction entity? It's far too soon to say anything for certain. And since you burned her body, we may never know. Go! Higgs said on You ruined everything. EE, that she doesn't have dooms like the rest of us. Sam, think. Assume that President Strand was an EE. Isn't it possible that her daughter is too? At the very least, Higgs may hope as much now that the president is unavailable. So he kidnaps her for E powers or whatever to cause a mass extinction. Hmm. Perhaps. Perhaps not. I doubt a single EE is powerful enough to cause a death stranding, assuming Amelie is an EE. Well, Higgs sure thinks she's got what it takes. Indeed. And we need to get her back as soon as possible. Mm. Uh, Not really, it's just time real. to go out. Yeah. Sam, go west. How do you want me to handle Die Hardman? With your customary reserve. Nothing good will come of him learning of our suspicions. Whatever else is going on, we still need the chiral network. Right. Interesting. So, oh. There's no such thing as fossilized dinosaurs or foss the, the ice man who was frozen. These were people frozen in time, much like Mama is now, and apparently how Bridget Strand was going to be. And these were extinction entities that caused mass extinctions with the Death Stranding. That's what they're trying to say. <laughs> kind of interesting rewriting of history. Certain a, a crazy-ass thriller sci-fi-like plot for sure, man. But it's pretty far-fetched and crazy over the top. All right, so we gotta get our next uh, our next job here. I think it's the story is pretty happen. crazy and over the top, but it's when inter ready, entertaining to say to the, the shore least. Of the tar belt and begin work on the chiral relay. Once it's ready, use the cupid to bring it online. The necessary materials are prepped for you. Supplies are limited, so handle them with care. You'll be carrying a lot too. All things considered, this might be one of your hardest runs to date. Hartman knows more about the site than I do, so he'll take it from here. It's about time for his wake-up call anyway. <laughs> Administering shock. Stand clear. That was a fast three minutes. Right. About that way station. The site we have chosen was an original candidate for the way station we lost to the top belt. Uh, ironically, we suspended construction because we deemed it a little too unstable and not worth the risk. But this time, it's our best shot. So let's hope we weren't right to change horses in midstream. Fortunately for us, the foundation we laid down is still intact. All you have to do is transport the necessary materials to the site and finish the job. I'm afraid it's the only way we can expand the network further west and rescue Armony. We're counting on you, Sam. Okay. So here it is. Repair the chiral relay way to the southwest. We gotta go back the way we just came. Back to that outpost and then pass that outpost even further to the southwest. Delightful. <laughs> Mr. Bubba Vera just cheered. He's like, I can't help but feel that this could be social interaction in the future. People actually giving you thumbs up 
or thumbs down in the middle of a conversation or at events and actually send likes to dislikes to that person venue's reputation. Everyone's like, ha ha ha. In the middle of, you know, they won't do it like this, but I see what you're saying. Like, they could, like, vote you up or down depending on what's. Imagine you're watching a political debate and you get live thumbs up and thumbs down during the debate and stuff. That's very similar to uh, Black Mirror. There was an episode of Black Mirror that was just like that. That was the plot. It was pretty crazy. <clears throat> All right, well. Order assigned. Uh, okay. Uh, auto arrange. Here you go. So I'm almost at max. I wonder if anyone left a vehicle around here. If they did, that would be great, but I doubt they did. I'm probably going to do a whole fucking thing on foot, I bet. There's no way to fabricate a vehicle in this area. Yep. So, we'll go from here. We'll go back to where we came. Yeah, we'll go to the back to the Evo Devo Biologist. Actually, let's clear off everything first. We'll go back to the Evo Devo Biologist. And then we'll go from there south to the construction site. All on freaking foot. <laughs> it's gonna stink. This is gonna stink. Like, it wasn't bad enough. No, we gotta do, do it again. Oh my god, dude. And I'm at max weight, too. Keep on keeping up. This is going to be a shit sandwich. <laughs> Weapons restrictions lifted. Two universities are now allowed clapping in lectures instead of students have to use jazz hands. Those who don't don't like loud noises can be harmed by clapping, hence jazz hands. Jazz hands! I want jazz hands. I want everything to be jazz hands. No more clapping, just jazz hands everywhere. How much does the backpack weigh? 180 kilos? I don't know how much that is in real life. 180 kilo backpack. I think those sparks are the stability screwing up. But I think that the backpack I'm wearing, see the stabilizer? Allows it to stabilize after a few seconds. Otherwise he'd be falling. <laughs> The Paradox says, do you really think this is Game of the Year material? Again, I gotta, I gotta tell you what I like and what I don't like. The plot is very, very interesting. It's unique. Obviously, Kojima was on something, but at the same time, it's very entertaining to see this plot unfold. The graphics are great. The voice acting, the mocap work, right? All done really well. Um, and the world creation. You know, the whole, the whole world itself is very fun and unique. The actual gameplay mechanics fucking suck. They're boring. Look what I'm doing right now. If I wasn't answering your question, how about exactly would I be getting entertainment value out of what I'm doing right now? And the answer is I wouldn't be at all. I'd be bored to tears. Um, and that's what they're going for with this game. Like, Kojima actually thought that the gameplay of this game is good. It, it's not. It's just not. You know? You know, early on in the game, I thought it was repetitive going across, like, the, the fucking grass. Now that I'm in the mountains, this is, like, it's work. This game has become work. It's not fun. It's work. It's, like, tedium to get through it. And luckily, this is my job. So I'm okay with, you know, forcing my way through it and doing it. Especially because you guys are hanging out with me. You're making it bearable. You guys are making it fun with the interactions. But can you imagine uh, anyone trying to play this offline by themselves, trying to play this fucking game? Like, why would you even enjoy it? Why, wh what right now am I doing that's enjoyable at all? Exactly. You got me. You got me because I'm not seeing anything fun right now. <laughs> so now I gotta get past fucking BTs. While I'm carrying the Leaning Tower of Horse shit on my back. <laughs> Great. I'm sure I'll really be able to sneak with this thing on my back. Yeah, right. Oh, man.
See, here's the thing. You can always argue, well, Kojima's artistic vision is that really you are struggling in the game, much like if you really were trying to re rebuild the country, this is what it would be like, you know? And, and so, this is an accurate representation of, of, of what Kojima is trying to portray in this game and yada yada yada. Now, okay, fair enough, you can argue that. But the question you have to ask, is it fun? You know? Games primarily are meant to be experiences where you're having enjoyment. It's supposed to be entertainment. Now, I, you could easily argue, well, there are movies that you watch and the movies aren't necessarily fun. They're arduous. They're, 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 they're actually painstaking to watch. They're, they, they make you cringe. They make you have negative emotion because of what's happening in the movie. And I'll agree with you there. Not everything is about supposed to be, oh, super over-the-top, happy-go-lucky fun. At the same time, there should be some kind of enjoyment factor. So, if to you it's, oh, get through the tedious gameplay because you are really having a the story and you get this feeling of accomplishment by doing it, fair enough. I guess then, you know, Kojima was really honing in on you as an audience, but there's going to be people who will definitively argue this game sucks ass because the, the, ba the, the base gameplay mechanics are not fun. Trudging through a fucking snowy mountain with a bunch of boxes on your back, you know, who, how many people will find that as fun or entertaining, you know, I don't know. Some people may, some people might not. Where the fuck is this stupid thing? Is this to my left? I'm guessing... Now it says it's to my right. Straight ahead to my right. So it's right over this ridge, I guess. Right over this snowy ridge. Uh, starting to cramp up. You will, but we're going to rest in a second, so don't worry. We just got to get over here. If ever you wanted to feel like you were on a long, tedious, arduous journey where there's going to be a reward at the end, this would be the game. You know what I mean? Like, this is, it literally feels like a grind. Look at this. Look at him. But some people will argue for the gameplay along the way. Some people argue this. They say... What's the best way to describe it? They say it's, um, it's the journey, not the destination, right? And a lot of games, actually, over the years have kind of argued, oh, well, maybe the overall gameplay of the entire thing wasn't great. Or, or actually, I take that back. They would argue... Drink something, dumbass. Would you shut up and... Or find rest. I was trying to look at the fucking map. I can't look at the map. Okay. But they would argue maybe the ending of the game is, is, a, is a letdown, but at least the gameplay along the way was fun, right? That's what some people would actually argue. Well, this game's kind of the opposite. It's like the gameplay along the way kind of sucks, but then maybe the ending's good? I don't know. It could be the opposite. Sleep? What happens if you sleep? Sleep in the middle of the fucking snow. What's funny is you're getting nothing back. I guess you have to drink the stupid energy drink to get your stamina back. Because he, he's he's sleeping and he's getting nothing, right? No, no one's home. Oh, my God. Well, Billy Bob Jr. has resubscribed to the channel for six months. Thank you, Billy Bob. <laughs> now, can I see where the fuck the stupid station is? Because I think we're right there. How the fuck is it behind us? We somehow got turned around. Figure that one out. Yeah, it's just right down there. <sighs> All right. No rest for the wicked. Okay. Do I dislike the game? No, I don't dislike it, but I also don't don't really enjoy the gameplay of it. Like it's like I said, it's mixed for me. It's a mixed bag for me. I don't even know where my canteen is. Apparently, it's not even on me. I can't drink it, right? Unless it's... Hold on. Oh, here it is. Drink Monster Energy. Oh, my God. That's so silly. Drink the Monster ah, Energy. Refreshing. 
TM Fool tipped me a dollar. He says, no need to be so negative. At least this game could be a chill stream replacement for some Nautica. An, an 80 hour game that gives you stuff to do and justify the $60 price tag. Every game of utility is everything you see that reminds me of the song. I didn't do that, dude. I'm, dude, again, I didn't say I hate the game. Like I said, I actually am enjoying following along and trying to look, figure out the story elements. I think they're actually really fun. Um, you know, but I didn't know that this game is not going to appeal to the vast majority of people out there. They're looking for, they're looking for an experience of, on all fronts. Yes, they want meaningful story, but they also want to feel like the gameplay is enjoyable. And I almost feel like most people would argue the gameplay of this game is not enjoyable at all. You know? Alright, so the thing is, this isn't even our destination. Essentially, we're only halfway. All clear. Yeah, we're halfway. So now what we have to do is go from here. Let's get rid of that. We'll go from here all the way to the southwest. Through more fucking mountains, right? So we'll, at least we got here, so we'll save from here. <sighs> okay. Crazy Spanks says, The way they force monster energy down your throat in this game is like the episode of Family Guy... Where Peter was working for a cigarette company. I think I faintly remember that episode. Faintly. Alright, so I saved the game. Are we ready to continue on with our arduous journey? Here we go. Hopefully we get the hell out of the snowy mountains during this. This big descent of the mountain here. <laughs> Yeah, look, we go down here. Yeah, look, there's a bridge here for us. That's nice. Maybe a little easier. Who needs that ladder? I ran all the fucking way down. Yeah, because we had already gone through... Yeah, we had already gone through this area. But we need to keep going southeast. Yeah, see? We gotta go back through this BT-infested area. This is where the tar fields were. And we grabbed the tar sample things, I think, wasn't it? I think this was where the tar shit was. Yeah, this is it again. The old volcano observatory. And I had to fight and kill the BTs. Well, now we gotta go back through it again. God damn it. Too cool. Yep, we gotta go straight through it. Hopefully we want BTs because I killed them all last time, but maybe they'll be back. Who knows? Uh. I think ultimately some people are very pissy about this game because not only did you get reviewers who panned it, but then you had reviewers who kissed its ass. And now it's been nominated for the Game of the Year Award, which is hilarious because the Game of the Year Awards mean absolutely fucking nothing. There is no official Game of the Year Award, so it doesn't matter if it was nominated for the stupid TV show or not. It's completely pointless. But people are all pissed because a lot of people don't like this game, and now they're like, how could it be nominated for Game of the Year? And of course, for those who don't know... The person who really, like, owns the Game of the Year Awards is Jeff, what's his name, Jeff Knightley or whatever his name, Jeff, he, I don't know how to say his name, but he is, like, a huge fanboy of Kojima and a personal friend of Kojima, so everyone's Hello. like, dude, so let me get this right, the guy who basically runs the Game Thank Awards you. show nominated the shit out of Death Stranding just because he's friends with Kojima, and he's never gonna admit that the game's not good, that's what people are basically saying now, <laughs> But I agree with you, Britton Nuggets. He says, I think it's funny how triggered people got by the nomination. I kind of agree, too. Like, how do you not understand that it's completely a worthless nomination? That means nothing. It literally means nothing. It, those are not official awards of anything. They don't mean anything. So for people to get angry about it is hilarious. <sighs> Roblox World Order said, what about if the game had co-op? Do I feel the game would be better if it had co-op? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know what that would be like. A 
apparently we're coming up on a mule camp. We absolutely are coming up on a mule camp. I'll see if I can go around these assholes. Just when you thought it was safe because there's no BTs, here come the mules to annoy the fuck out of you some more. <laughs> There's the mule camp right there. <laughs> Smoke can be used to hide from your enemies. Backcast says, when you're playing this game, I could literally take long uh, times not looking at the screen because I know what you're doing. You're just walking. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of have to agree with you there. It's not like you're missing out on any riveting gameplay. You're really not. Alright, I actually believe I might have gotten past the mules. So we, we just went, just think about this. A snow-covered mountain to dust in a desert with smoke. What the fuck? Where on earth is that? Where on earth would you ever see a snow-covered mountain sitting right next to a desert? <laughs> I mean, I've never been to the Rocky Mountains of the United States, which is what this is supposed to be simulating right now, but it seems kind of far-fetched to me. Oh, great, I'm getting shot at. Well, I'm just going to keep moving. Fuck this. Kimbo Slice Chase, if video game awards are pointless like mainstream movie awards, the movies that win movie of the year, most almost no one knows what they are without seeing them at private movie events. You're right. You're absolutely right. For many years, people have argued that the Oscars or whatever are completely worthless and really don't determine what movies are good. to catch his breath. There's a dude right there and I can't get up. I think I lost them. They, I did. They're going away. I actually lost them. Look at that. They're leaving. I, that was so close. I was right at the edge. I was seriously right at the fucking edge of getting caught and then I lost them at the last second. So that was incredibly lucky. Alright, I'm going to continue on. Sam Bridges cheered. He said, I agree. I think Sekiro was tedious and dopey. And the same old thing from From Software it was Dark Souls with a grapple hook. Hey, I was critical of Sekiro. I told you guys I thought the game was good, but I didn't think it was anywhere near as good as Dark Souls. I think the game was a one trick pony with the parrying. And that they really it was a huge cop out for the game. Because they, other Dark Souls games have tons of replayability, you know, and different weapon builds. And that game didn't have any of that at all. It did seem to be like a, a step down from the other games from software had made. So I'm in agreement with you there. Shut up, BB. Nobody cares about your stress level, BB. I guess that's it. Look at it. See, look, it looks like a big X or something. I'm assuming that's it right there. I got a calm BB. See how tedious this shit is? Like, it's so tedious to do this. <laughs> how exciting. <laughs> Someone's happy. Oh my god. 
And yes, this is required gameplay. You must do this to beat the game. Kimbo Slice Cheer said, would you say a game uh, would you say a game this year was a game you look back on like man everyone needs to play that? For me, I feel 2020 is going to blow this year out of the water. Kimbo, I, I, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Like I told you guys a million times. I play so many goddamn games. I would have to go back and look at all the games I played this year to answer questions on the fly like that. So I can't. Retro Jim Cheer said Sekiro was for fans of Tenchu series. They appreciate a lot of the period and execution mechanics. That's great, but what about fans of the modern From Software games? You know what I mean? Like, they were definitely looking for something, too. Drink some Monster Energy. Amazing. Okay, ready? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Hey, look, it's a song not from the same guys. It's actually a totally different song. Almost something between OK Chaos from Silent Poets. Silent Poets. Uh. So here we are. We're supposed to be at the edge of the, of the big lake, they had said, right? The Tar Lake or whatever? I guess that's what that is. We're at the edge of the Tar Lake. Captain K-Man did a 100-bit cheer, and he said, Baby Rage Hadouken DSP Anger. He, showed, he basically did emotes to show me throwing a Hadouken at a BB. Uh, I would never throw a Hadouken at BB. How dare you? Sam, you should be nearing the old building site. No shit. Look for the terminal and submit your materials for processing. It looks like this is an old crossroads. It's See it? Yeah. An old crossroads. All destroyed. I had to hold the triggers the entire time I did this because I have such a heavy load on my back. If I didn't, he would have kept stumbling and falling. <laughs> so, eat your heart out, everyone who said I needed fucking zip lines to do this part of the game. No, I didn't. I never used a single zip line, and I don't give a fuck about them. The game never explained them, therefore, I don't give a shit. I did it without it, I didn't need it, and it's quite frankly, it didn't really take any time away from my playthrough anyway. Everything else was able to be done fairly quickly, so not a big deal. Zip line's completely superfluous to the fucking game and not needed. <laughs> Sam Bridges here, he said, you can ride this floating carrier like a surfboard. I don't know if you tried that. No, I, I made one, and I couldn't figure out how to deploy it right, and I never used it. Sam, <laughs> you need to get those materials processed in order to finish the Cairo Relay. What do you think I'm doing, asshole? Alright. Sheesh. Okay, Cartman sending likes, uh, hologram provided, 60 deaths and 60 bursts, so I must have just finished chapter 8, the Heartman chapter. Yup, I must have just completed it. Alright. This was a bot delivery. Good job, Sam. Now access the terminal and bring the relay online. The relay is completely destroyed. Bring it online. <laughs> completely wrecked.
Cairo relays during the UCA. And with that, we're all linked up. Once you cross the tar belt, the end will be in sight. We're this close to Emily, to America's second chance. Edgenot City awaits. The staff we're sending will start by building a safe house. Over time, they'll expand their operations and establish a new facility. In doing so, they'll carry on the legacy of the brave souls lost to the tar. All thanks to you, Sam. Now, let's figure out how to get you across this tar belt. Okay, cross the tar belt. Good question. How the fuck do I do that? First of all, I thought I was carrying a, a spare pair of shoes. I guess I'm not. I need to go far. I need to fabricate a pair of shoes. They won't let me. Look, terminal lock. I'm not sure what to do next. Everything's locked. Keep on keeping on. I guess I should go over here to this base that someone built, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do next for the story. I'll probably take a break. Um... Cross the tar belt. Uh, maybe a vehicle? I don't know, but let's let's rest up first. Uh, pressing the wrong button. Your work is great. Okay. Oh man. My shoes are all fucked up and I can't make any new ones. There's nowhere to fabricate them. Lou's been pacified. Good morning, Sam. Blood collection complete. Thank you for your generosity. Look, there's more figures over here again. See? What are those figures to the right? It looks like it's Heartman. Yup. It's Heartman sitting in the bed with Sam standing next to it. So, depending on what chapter of the game you're in, the figures here reflect the story sec segment that you're in. I see. I think I could change the color of those glasses now. I unlocked a bunch of colors, I think they said. Always slam the beer. Take a look at the at the glasses. I think I could put on different ones. How do I how do I change the oh I wanted to change the color. I think I gotta do that from the, the equipment customization, huh? Customize equip yeah the I think you do it for the equipment rack. Okay. Change the color scheme. Oh, you can actually change the color on his sunglasses, too? I didn't even know that. Yeah, look, I got a bunch more colors now. Black lenses. Black and black. I want him to have some bright red sunglasses. There you go. There you go. 
Bright red sunglasses. <laughs> so stupid. All right, we should interact with BT. With BT. With BB. Also known as Lou. I don't know why he calls him Lou when it's supposed to be a female. Oh. Lou is happy. Okay. Alright, so the only other thing left to do here would be, uh, let's see what we got new in the terminal. A snapshot of ages past by the spiritualist. Oh, yes. Chiral nightmares from the geologist. The chiral network connects people past and present. The Chronicles of Aaron Chapter 1, The Great Embarkation. No one's reading that. Paleontologist. The Ammonite with the umbilical cord of mass extinctions. We already know. We know that it was an extinction entity, apparently. Chronicles of Aaron Chapter 2, The Lonely Road. No one cares. Summoning objects from the other side through the tar. I've been analyzing the tar samples you collected for me, and i got to say its properties are wholly unlike those of the more common tar we have observed on the planet. The thing can be said that the tar taken from the strata in which the Ammonite with the umbilical cord was found... Yeah, a whole building swallowed by the tar. The tar is a gateway to the past. It has consumed. Maybe it could be manipulated to regurgitating its old meals. Okay. Anything interesting here? Is it just if it's just prepper? I'm not reading it. The Neanderthals are not extinct. Oh my god. Hartman's theory of evolution. The death stranding threatens to undo all of our progress. Consider the chiral network, which incorporates the beach. Where time does not exist, or consider time fall, which rapidly accelerates the degradation of what it comes into contact with. How can our sense of time, honed over millions of years, remain intact when we must cope with such irrational phenomenon? We're growing apart, retreating into isolation, gradually losing our place with societies. That's how he's saying it's undoing evolution. Interview with the, them. I'm not doing that. Tar bubbles up on the beach. Okay, that's it for those. All right, well, I guess we're good for now. We pound another beer, and then uh, we have to try to figure out how to get across this fucking tar lake, right? Pound another beer. I want to put on those those sunglasses. To red sunglasses. Very nice. Pound another beer. So I consider myself a lore junkie. Not a junkie, but at least I want to read enough to understand the basis of, like, what's going on in the game. You know? At least in this game, you get a lot of it. And Dark Souls and shit, you have to constantly be reading every little tidbit you get on every weapon and shit to figure it out. At least in this game, it's semi- Explains what the hell's going on. <laughs> right in the face. Here we go again. Okay. What's hilarious is like Norman Reedus is probably like dicking around. He's like, dude, this is so stupid. They keep having me mocap drinking animations. I'm gonna do a stupid one just for the hell of it. So on the fly, he's like, oh, I'm gonna spray it in your face. And then put it in the game. And wait a minute, I was trying to like make fun of the whole process and you actually put that shit in the game? Kojima's probably like, artistic genius, yes, artistic genius. Oh, we already saw this one before. Yeah. We saw this one before. Can we skip it? We already saw it. Yeah, we already saw that one, so we'll skip it. Mr. Bubba says, I want heart-shaped red sunglasses. Why not? Who wouldn't? All right, so I'm going to save my game, because then we got to figure out how the fuck do we get across this tar. You got to think, maybe if I, like, start walking across it, it'll trigger something to happen, like a cutscene or something, right? Here, let's clear out everything. You gotta think it's gonna trigger something. 
Let's just walk out and see what happens. Yeah, look. Yeah. BTs. The only way west is through that. To make matters worse, I don't believe your PCC is capable of building anything that will get you across. There's gonna be a cutscene or something there to do this. There must be a way. We can't give up. Not with what's at stake. We'll see if we can't think of something here. But considering everything you've been through, I wouldn't be surprised if you've already got a few ideas of your own. Yeah, run into it and let the fucking game take over. That's what I'm gonna do. Start walking and see what happens. Maybe a, maybe a fucking boss fight or something. Actually, Sam Pretty says you can ride the floating carrier like a surfboard. See, if I had a floating carrier with me, maybe I could do that. I don't think I have one with me, though, right? Yeah, I don't have a PCC with me to deploy, so I can't deploy one. Fuck yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm walking right into it. I don't care. See? Something's happening. It's gonna find a it's gonna find one. Fucking walk across, fuck it. I'm not afraid. I don't care, I'll walk. Here we go. I told you, watch. Something's happening. Yup, cutscene. Oh wait. Was this supposed to happen? Actually, I think this was supposed to happen. So where, where is the body? Oh, look. That's the shore. Where the hell did I... What's going on? It's only... Oh, there. It's over here. Okay. This again. Oh, thanks. You moved me. You vomit. Well, I guess that wasn't what I was supposed to do. Cargo lost. Oh, good. Good. I always love losing all my cargo. Well, I guess we'll go this way. Oh, well. I thought for sure there would be like a cutscene or something that would play out and get me across, but I guess not. Seems like, nah, fuck all that. You got screwed. Not like I had too much enemy anyway. I really didn't. I just had a couple guns, a ladder or something. Nothing, nothing critical at all. Whoa! to do platforming. In fact, that's what I think I'm supposed to do. Platform across all this shit. That is cool, dude. 
giant monster whales. Oh boy! Nice. Yeah, see, there's a way to go. Because you're an idiot. With you out there giving it your all, there's hope for us yet. Oh, come on. Yeah, so use the tar to teleport in the landscape of the past. Alright? I got sucked into the fucking the void outs and use that to get, get where we need to go. Uh. Dude, that's me. Look at that. Oh my god, that's cool. Uh. That's it, right there. What the hell is that supposed to be? Oh my god, that's what's her name? Uh, Emily, right? Walks away, you bitch. Get back here. Great. And that's Death Stranding, ladies and gentlemen. A gaming masterpiece. Every single moment was just insanely riveting to the point where I'll never be the same person. Now that I've experienced this game. So I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Thanks for Kojima for the incredible unique experience. And uh, until Kojima, you know, makes his next amazing mind-melting game. I guess this is GSP signing off. Thank you guys very much. I hope that you enjoyed Death Stranding. At least everything was 100% was explained by the end of the game. Okay. Signing off. See you guys later. Oh, wait. Oh, there's more. Wait, what's this? <laughs> wait. What's that?
He's back on his beach. We already saw this. I don't know why we're seeing this again. We've already seen this cutscene. Unless they change it or they extend it. Yeah, we already saw it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Fox McCloud took me a dollar, okay? And he says, does Washington State have a tax-free weekend? Because that could be a good weekend to do like a tips goal and try to raise funds to afford PS5 and other things next year. The answer is, no, everything I do is taxable. There's no such thing as a tax-free weekend for streamers where they can get income without being taxed on it. That's pretty ridiculous. If that were the case, wouldn't every streamer try to do it only that weekend? You know what I mean? Like, so the answer is no, it doesn't exist for stuff like that. <laughs> All right, well, he's alive. What a surprise and a shock. <laughs> Hey, Jigs. Keep your voice down. You don't want to scare the poor girl away, do you? She's in there. I can smell her. Of course, I wouldn't have known for sure if it wasn't for you and your wonderful network. Sir, so, they used him. Bless your heart. Thank you kindly. Oh, Sam Bridges. The fuck's written on his forehead? Careful. Contents are fragile. And why does he have eyeliner on? Like the world and everything in it. <laughs> Me, I'm... I'm no exception. Troy Baker, you're no David Bowie, but you're a disgusting freak. I'm not the only one wearing masks either. There's your boss man, and that woman, and oh, let's not forget little you. What the hell's this? Oh my god! Whoa, he's like frying his face. What the it's shit? Okay. I know it ain't easy wearing a mask all the time. Now the mask can come off, right? <laughs> You remember this? Hmm? Oh, nope, nope, nope. Mmm. Poor sweet Amelie. She's holed up in the beach nearby. Tell you what, what say we make it a race? Hmm? Whoever wins gets to usher in the end of days. Nothing like the eve of extinction bring focus to the mind. These folks honest. There'll be no need for masks soon. But I wonder when you look death in her eye. Will you blink. He sure loves licking things. Pretty disgusting. Troy Baker's a disgusting freak. He's just licking everything around him. <laughs> Episode 9, Higgs. Well, it looks like we're actually going to get some information on Higgs. We've been waiting to find out who the fuck this guy really is the whole game, right? Still with me, Sam? No. Even now, our way forward, our way to save Emily, is the same as always. Your first priority is to get the local distro center on the network. Until it's complete and everybody's connected, Higgs 
won't find it easy to get to Emily. She should be safe. So take your time and do it right. Well, here it is. And hopefully we can do this right away because I need to make boots and a bunch of items. I have nothing. So I'm assuming this is going to be like our, our, our new place to start the rest of the playthrough, right? Okay. Shout out to No Couture. What's going on, man? He tipped me $20. Thank you very much to No Couture for a $20 tip today. Appreciate seeing you. And thank you for the support as always, man. You've been a tremendous help these past couple of weeks. So thank you very much, man. They actually made us exceed the tip's goal by $9. So thank you very much. I'm going to update that in a second once uh, we get into the, the distro center here. Alva Waffle said he's gonna go lick someone in honor of that cutscene. Connect your cube into the terminal and bring the site online. Finally, a normal site again. One that'll have the save room and everything inside of it. Alright, here we go. So, thank you, No Couture. That updated there. Now we're way to the west. Yeah, look, we got sucked across that that you know whatever you call it, the fucking tar river, tar fucking ocean. All right, so we got a remote detonation grenade launcher now. It's an upgraded version of the grenade launcher. Darius is now connected to the chiral network. Good work, Sam. You've made it as far as Bridges One ever did. We never pushed further west. Frankly, it's a miracle we kept that distro center running. Anyway, you're almost at Edge Knot City. Your final destination. Where <clears throat> Emily should be waiting. Smile, Sam. Only one more knot to go. Yeah, right. We know the end doesn't end that quick. Cupid to use. Though you'll need another component to finish the job. Regardless, the nationwide network will serve as your ticket home. Just bear in mind that by bringing Edge Knot online, you'll likely be revealing Emily's location to Higgs. You'll need to get to her before he does. Head to your private room and get your gear sorted. When you're ready to go, we'll give you what you need. Make sure not to leave the distro center without taking the order. You'd be an idiot to leave without the order. <laughs> All right, they're forcing us to go to the room. Probably some cutscenes here. See what happens. Oh, why is it so light in here? So bright. The hell? Sam, are you there? Amelie. Can you hear me? Sam. Over here, Amelie. The network's nearly complete. Just one more knot to go. And then America will be whole again. Thank you for the anonymous 150-bit cheer, Did whoever that was. I appreciate that. I wanted to. It's Amerigo. After Amerigo Vespucci. What? The man who discovered the continent. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's, Columbus. A, that's a dude's Except name. Except Amerigo was <clears throat> full of it. He lied. America is a lie. I'm, I'm on the beach, Sam. Our beach. The one where I was born. Higgs will never find me here. He can't. So don't worry. Get the last Cupid to Edge Knot City and finish what we started. I'll meet you in your room at the distro center when it's all over. There's something you need to know, Sam. I've kept things from you. Worn a mask for the longest time. Everything Higgs said about me is true. I could end it all. Us. Mankind. Extinction. That's what I am. How does that even mean? But it's not what I want to be. She's the extinction all entity. All I want is for you and me and everyone in this world to be whole. <gasps> Sam. 
What the hell? Get out of my weapons case. <laughs> those are dangerous, expensive weapons. Get away from those. Promise you'll stop me. Don't let me end it all. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Amelie? 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 I definitely need to use the shower. They won't let me use the shower? What the hell? They won't let me. Look. They won't let me take a shower. Oh, there we go. I gotta take a shower, dude. Look at my face. I gotta wash this shit off your disgusting, filthy body, dude. <clears throat> La -da -dee -dee -da. Ya -da 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 -da. Oh, let's wash King Saliva off my face. <laughs> You know, Higgs is a disgusting motherfucker, but he always has nice minty breath when he licks me. So, yeah, yeah. positive. It's a, it's a trade off, as they say. <laughs> Philip Smelly Chair gifted a sub to Curiosity Killed the Claws. How hilarious. Thanks for the gifted sub. Oh, yeah, the figurines are again missing from the table. See that? Because now we're in chapter 9, but nothing's really happened story-wise yet. Alright, what about uh, Lou again? Let's check on Lou. Mr. Papa Vera cheered. He said, I can almost imagine almost getting to your final objective and forced through some time warp, sending you back to the beginning. No, I can, I, from what I'm going to understand, there, at one point in the game, you have to go from the end back to the beginning. I'm not kidding. Like, you actually have to traverse the entire map again from start to finish. Now, of course, you could stop along the waypoints along the way, but apparently it's insanely tedious. It's supposed to be, like, for the big finale of the game. But can you imagine how fucking boring that shit's gonna be? That's gonna be, like, four hours of boredom where we just talk. <clears throat> Lou is happy. I'm tired, huh? Of course. Jackie Spur, of course I'm hungry. Cat today is making something original. She's making homemade gumbo. Which apparently has all kinds of ingredients. Sausage and freaking shrimp and uh, like all peppers and all kinds of stuff over rice. So we're going to try it out for the first time and see if it's any good. <laughs> okay. So my weapons rack is almost full. There's only one more segment there left. And that's probably going to be for the final chapters. You get a few more extra weapons, I'm sure. So I think we're pretty much done. I guess we'll just check the terminal. Let's check the terminal. Uh, one new email from the paleontologist. Extinctions in the beach. Times of green environmental upheaval invariably led to mass extinctions. The organisms that manage to survive these extinctions do so by adapting to their changing circumstances. But what circumstances could possibly spur an ammonite to evolve an umbilical cord? Harvin and I have both hypothesized that the answer to that question might be the beach. There are key differences between the umbilical cords observed in these entities and those found in ordinary mammals, which would suggest that they are uniquely equipped to survive in a world connected to the other side. That this stranding has, by measure, by any measure, resulted in environmental upheaval on a scale comparable to that which accompanied mass past extinctions. Um, we will need to study those events more carefully to figure out how to best proceed. So, again, following along the plot, they're saying that those extinction-level events that have happened actually were death strandings. So remember, everyone always hypothesized the dinosaurs went extinct because a meteor hit the planet and changed the climate and the dinosaurs couldn't exist anymore. They're saying no. What it was was a death stranding event happened and it just wiped them all out. But other uh, creatures evolved to have these umbilical cords to the other side and they survived the death stranding because of it. Okay. I guess... I mean, it's an interesting. It's an interesting hypothesis. I don't know how that's going to translate into the game, though. I don't think we have any new memory chips, right? No, we only found like two or three. Yeah, three. An unknown man's journal and the two Gundams. That's all we ever found. All right, so I guess let's go up top. Let's see what our next leg of the mission is, and then that's going to be it for today. I don't have any time to do another mission or anything. Um, but before we do, well, we got a pound of beer, dude. We can't be down here and not pound a fucking beer. We gotta pound one back. <laughs> pound.
pound it out. Reedus. Reedus knows how to pound him back, dude. He does. Philip Smelly Chair Chitty says, Gumbo's terrible for uric acid buildup. There you go. Yes, like many things, it's terrible for uric acid buildup. I'm sure not everything you eat is good for uric acid buildup. I eat, I drink cherry juice every dinner. He says, you gotta drink cherry juice. I always drink cherry juice anyway. Every day I drink cherry juice, so. Okay. Madara's got the monster energy drinks have been gone for quite a long time. Ever since I did the side quest to unlock the Timefall Porter, he's been ch chugging these beers. Do it! Right in your face! Right in your face. Oh! Right in your face. Beautiful. Amazing. Now, I would clap for that, but remember, we don't clap anymore. We're jazz hands. Jazz hands for the right in your face spritz. Okay, now let's get out of here. What a stream we've had today. Jazz hands. <clears throat> All right. Will it be in the same cutscene, or will we see a new one? Yeah, we saw this one already. That's where we saw his dog tags for the first time. Yeah. I can't wait till we get the full story of him because I don't know what the fuck's going on with him. Alright, so let's see what the mission is. I also gotta make new shoes. You still with me, Sam? Check the terminal and pick up that order before you leave. You can't. Shut up. First thing I'm gonna do is make new fucking shoes. Remote detonation Remote grenade detonation launcher? Detonation grenade launcher. Launches explosive projectiles, as you may have guessed. Can be used in conjunction with a variety of rounds depending on your needs. And yes, said rounds are indeed detonated remotely and at your discretion after firing. Nah, I'll, I want a regular grenade launcher. I don't want that thing. So I need a level 3 boots, right? We still got the power skeleton on us, so that's okay. Not the power skeleton, the all-terrain skeleton. I still got the power glove, so I'm okay with that. Oh, uh, I guess I'll... T I think I have one anti-BT handgun. So maybe I'll fabricate one regular grenade launcher. And one... Assault rifle level three. Now, you know what? The anti-BT handgun's better. The assault rifle sucks. I do need something non-lethal in case I run into mules. So I'll either do the bola gun or I'll do the uh, the non-lethal assault rifle. We'll do one non-lethal assault rifle, level three. There you go. I said one. All right, let's make all that shit. Carry on back? I, re I want to equip it. I guess load all. This I can put into my private locker. Hold on. Here we go. Put those on and take the other ones. That are fucked up and put those in the locker. There you go. So I got two blood bags. Non-lethal assault rifle. A anti-BT handgun and a grenade launcher. The all-terrain skeleton, power gloves, and the bridge's boots. Okay. That's good. Now I gotta see what the mission is. Take on the orders. Network activation key delivery. Edge not city. So we gotta go through this city. It's actually a city for once. We're not going through countryside. We're actually going through a fucked up abandoned city to get to Edge not city uh, down there. And then this is gonna obviously advance the plot. So, okay. This is it, Sam. Edge Not City, the last piece of the puzzle. But you'll need more than just a Cuban to link this one up, though. You'll also be required to supply a network activation key. Anticipating terrorist interference, we held on to it for safekeeping. 
Okay. It's been sitting in that distro center gathering dust. Until now. Collect it at the terminal and take it to Edge Not City. Luckily for us, the automated systems at the distro center there still seem to be operational. So once the key is entered, it should automatically interface with the backbone network. A word of caution, Sam. The activation key has a unique identifier. Hmm. If anything happens to it, you can't just print a new one. So you can't lose it. It's one of a kind. Irreplaceable. And for the love of all that's holy, don't lose it. And don't go breaking it either. You hear me, Sam? If ever there was a delivery not to fuck up, it's this one. We're all counting on you. Okay. Riori wants me to read. Um. Riori would like me to actually read the description of this, I guess, network key. Apparently it has something to do with the game or with the, with the plot. I guess I will. <clears throat> Let's see. A device required to connect Edge Not City to the Chiral Network. Each key has its own unique ID, meaning they can't be replaced if lost. You know what? Take a look at it. You see what I see? The network activation key is a fucking BB. You see that, right? It's a BB. They 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 play it off like it's something unique, but when you look at it, that's that is a BB container. There's got to be a, a, a specific BB inside of it. You notice that, right? So, you, you normally would, ah, whatever, you don't look at it. Now you're figuring out, you're actually delivering a BB. Interesting. Order assigned. Alright, you guys couldn't see it because my webcam was blocking it, but all it was, it looked like the, a BB container. Have a pleasant journey. All right, let's head off. Actually, nothing I should do here because I, I always forget to do this. There we go. Look at that. Talk about a difference. All right, so let's save up. And the next time on Death Stranding, we'll be heading off to Edge of Not City. And we'll see how that goes and go from there. I'm hoping it ends up being fun. I'll say today was a mixed bag. Out of the four hours I played today... Probably about two hours was quite boring trudging through those fucking mountains, but at least we had the Heartman plot line. Then we got down here to the Tar Lake, and this was fun. So it was, for me, kind of a mixed bag. I'm hoping next time we at least get half and half again. So, all right. Good stuff.